Hey everybody, boys, from Speaking Force. Welcome to the weekly technicals for the majors for Euro dollar, dollar yen, pound dollar, April 22nd, April 26, 2019. Volatility, where are you? Those of you who follow the FX market know we are literally at record low volatility ever. We basically have had zero movement, 50 pip weeks in the majors, just absolutely dead, nowhere markets. And given the fact this is Easter week, it's kind of unlikely we're going to have anything major shockingly moving unless we get some exogenous shocks coming out of the system. There's also, of course, always a potential of some fat finger movements in Asia because not only is it Easter week in all of the Western European countries and Anglo-Saxon uh, economies across the world, but it's also a big spring break in Japan. And that means there's literally no liquidity in the Japanese and the Asian session as well. So... We could have some just massive quick moves uh, based on algos, but as far as just actual market movement, it just seems that markets are absolutely dead. There's just an incredible suppression of price action. And that's why we find ourselves week after week in these very, very, very tight ranges. If you look at the Euro, for all of the angst and all of the movements that we've had, we really haven't moved anywhere. It's 12 to 1400 on the Euro, Yen took out the 1200. Everybody got excited. This was this was a big level that everybody thought was going to be a breakout level. And then we just died. We literally, I'll show you the charts, have not been able to move more than 10 pips beyond 12. Not one day in a row, not two day in a row, not three day in a row, not four day in a row. It's just unbelievable at how stagnant the price action has been. The one movement that we have seen this week and i think it's we, we started to catch this last week is ironically enough the decline in the pound dollar after all of the angst over brexit delay has been settled the irony and this is the sort of a typical fx market reaction is to go the other way that we've been we've been buying the dip all the way up to the brexit decision and now it's just been selling the rally all the way through and i think we're still very much in the sell the rally mode as far as cable goes it is Clearly, um, despite relatively decent domestic data, very much the weakest major um, as we as we enter the uh, the Easter week uh, slow down holiday. So, economic calendar also on the major side very tepid. We have existing home sales. By the way, I'm recording this on on Good Friday, and the home um, uh, sales data that came out on Friday is actually pretty horrible. U.S. data just on the housing part, which you would think, given the incredibly low interest rates, just simply not, not uh, coming up uh, to par. And I think that's underestimated by the market at how important that is for the overall economy. Um, housing still remains a key sector in the U.S. economy, and the fact that we have not been able to get off the ground, to me, suggests that there is a much weaker final demand in the U.S. consumer than meets the eye, even though we had very decent uh, retail sales and things are um, actually mildly positive to the U.S. side. I just don't think there's much of a, uh, nearly as much of a juice as, as, as the market may be thinking here. So we got existing home sales, new home sales Monday, Tuesday. Um, in Germany, we have IFO, which the market I think is going to be expecting to be relatively negative. The PMIs were still pretty horrible out of Europe, but uh, at this point, so much of bad news is factored into the euro. We'll talk about this, that it's really not moving down as much as you would think. And then into Friday, we have the um, US GDP numbers and Michigan State. Now, US GDP numbers actually could be a little bit to the downside. So we do have some, head basically we have all sorts of headwinds as far as housing data and US GDP on the US side. It'd be interesting to see if the yen can climb against that backdrop as we go forward. Looking at the charts on the majors, it's just been a very, very quiet ride. So we had this big drop in the euro off the PMIs, but the drop on a relative basis is still very tepid and we the most important thing is we're still holding this double bottom triple bottom 1185 bottom um, we close below the um, 20 sma it's certainly not positive but really um, unless the markets just take out this 1185 and and that would be the fresh brand new leg lower because that's been a, a dominant bottom that's uh, been in the marketplace really since november october of last year so unless we make those fresh lows this week which course always can be possible i would not be a seller of euro the euro to me is kind of a bite of dip until proven wrong and we really need to be proven wrong here the euro seems to be uh just consolidating 
post um, uh, post kind of negative news. We'll have to see how it holds out, but we're still essentially in the 12 to 1350 range. The more negative development is cable. So cable is starting to really peel away from the 20 SMA, as you can see here. And most importantly, it is teetering on the edge of the support here at the 29. This 2950 goes, the next level of support really comes in at 28. Uh, and this is against a backdrop of um, essentially relatively okay UK data. Both labor data was pretty good last week and retail sales was a strong spend, but the market just seems to be, I think, having a lot of unwind post-Brexit. Um, and uh, it's hard to extract what the what the, the negative flows in cable are right now. Um, and perhaps maybe the fact that just uh, that there's still really no clear cut long-term resolution of Brexit. Um, but technically what you what you're seeing is 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 deceleration to the downside. So I think the shorts are certainly gonna to want to try to press that 2950 to the downside. If they can break that, it puts it square down to the 2800 as we go forward. And here's the uh, here's the yen. Look at look at the yen. I mean this is this is just astounding. Uh, one step forward and then just no steps forward. So we took this took out the 1200, the 112 level, very, very key level, and then five days of 30 pip movement. I mean, just astoundingly little movement to the upside. And this against the U.S. yield backdrop, which actually came back up from below the 240s, uh, the much more uh, positive uh, equity backdrop, and you still can't get any kind of forward action. But the one thing I think is positive for the bulls is that we also don't get any corrective action. So whether they try to you know push it up or push it down, they've been buying, uh, scooping it up underneath the 1200. So to me, I think as long as we can hold 1150, which is that key breakout level. As long as we're just kind of holding it, the longer this base, the longer this base, the more likely we're going to be breaking out. I think uh, if we can poke our way through 1225, that will open up quite a big swath of uh, uh, of stops and short covering, and could push us all the way perhaps to the 1300 over the end of the week. This seems to be, at least technically for now, the healthiest uh, major as we go forward. So that's how the major shape up into what could very well be yet another relatively quiet week as the holiday, Easter holiday continues. Wish you guys the best luck, best trading. Bush Osberg over now.